my name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to receive your healing with insight from George Jeffries. Of course, as I explained in the last episode, George Jeffries was one of the greatest healing evangelists to hit Britain since the time of John Wesley and George Whitfield, and that he saw tens of thousands come to the Lord. In his ministry, many people were healed of all kinds of diseases and sickness, and he preached salvation, but he also preached Jesus as the Lord your healer. And I want to share some stuff from him to help you discover how you can receive your healing. Peter, and 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 said this, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, you, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And that's typically where we stop that Jesus on the cross paid the price for salvation, and that by faith we can receive that salvation. But it didn't stop there. It goes on, for by his wounds you were healed. And of course, he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 53, and I encourage you to read Isaiah 53, and again you will see a glorious picture of Jesus paying the price for your sin and the consequences of sin. If we look at the ministry of Jesus, we see that Jesus would say to somebody, your sins are forgiven. But he would also say, rise up and walk or be healed. And he would offend because they would look and say, only the Son of God, only God has the ability to forgive sins. But Jesus said, to show you that the Son of God has the ability to forgive sins, He said, rise and walk. He connected the forgiveness of sins with the releasing from all kinds of sickness and disease. In other words, He tied together that sin brought forth the consequence of things like sickness and disease. They were the consequence of sin or the fall of Adam. Jesus overcame the disobedience of Adam on the cross through his absolute obedience and paid the price for us that we could receive his righteousness. That righteousness gives us access to what he won on the cross. You must recognize that your ability to receive healing is not based on you, on you earning it or anything else, but on what Jesus did. So, looking at what George Jeffries explained, first, the state of your spiritual life can easily affect the condition of your body. Therefore, see that your spiritual life is nourished by prayer and the reading of God's Word. And I will explain that it's so critical, particularly when you are in a battle facing sickness and disease, that you get into the Word and that you lay hold of the precious promises regarding healing. Study it, look at it, until faith arises and you become fully persuaded and know that you know that God is the Lord, sorry, God is the Lord, your healer. And that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed and made whole. That it becomes a revelation to you. We see that Jesus walked the earth and he walked as an ordinary man and few recognized him, except by revelation that he was the Son of God or the Messiah. It took a revelation. And in the same way, it takes a revelation for you to recognize him as the Lord your healer. It takes the Holy Spirit to open your eyes through the Word and through prayer. We must walk as spiritual people, feeding upon the Word. And as we feed upon the Word, our spiritual man grows, and we become more in line with the will and purpose of God more able to receive. Because again, Jesus would tell us when he, cast, uh, when he forgave somebody, go and sin no more, lest something worse befall you. In other words, we've got to stay on the right path, feeding on the right things, lest something worse befall us. Uh, George Jeffries explained, healing like salvation is all of grace. Therefore, do not consider your own worthiness. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works. You cannot earn your salvation. 
Your works do not qualify you or disqualify you from receiving salvation. You got to come by grace and through faith receive what Jesus did on the cross. And it's through believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that you are saved. It takes the same faith to receive healing. And it takes the same mindset and understanding that I come to receive my healing, not based on my works or my worthiness, but based on the grace, what you have freely provided through Jesus. And if I will come by faith and receive it, I can lay hold of what you have provided. Healing is yours. So often we look at our sin and we disqualify us and we consider ourselves unworthy because of this and that, instead of recognizing what Jesus paid and did on the cross, and that He has provided freely for us if we will simply come and receive. How can we neglect so great a salvation? Healing testifies, I and mean, I'll come back to that. Anyways, you should not worry over your little faith, but consider the greatness of the divine healer. We understand we face a small devil and a big Jesus. No matter how big or great the sickness may be, Jesus is greater. He overcame death. And the greatest thing of sickness he could ever throw at you, of course, is death. And it said in the word, O death, where is thy sting? Because Jesus overcame the grave. And in overcame the grave, the greatest enemy was defeated. And of course, there will come a day where death will absolutely be defeated. In the meantime, no sickness is greater than the name of Jesus because we're told at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow so and every tongue confess. So anything that has a name must bow to the name of Jesus. Any sickness or disease must bow to the authority and the name of Jesus. And we've seen that throughout testimony after testimony throughout the church history. All kinds of sicknesses and diseases have bowed to the name of Jesus. If we come and we fix our eyes on Jesus, because Jesus is the healer, not a person, not a thing, but Jesus. And if we get our eyes off of things, off of our sickness, disease, no matter how big it may appear to us, and get our eyes on Jesus and make Jesus bigger, He is enthroned upon the praises of His people. As we praise Him through focusing our attention on Him and lifting Him up, we can then receive His healing. You cannot receive if you're holding something in your hands. And as long as you're holding tight to that sickness and disease, it prevents God pouring into your hands. So I encourage you to let go and fix your eyes on Jesus and begin to receive what He has for you. You must not be overburdened about your long-standing disease. Cases like yours have been healed before. So no matter what you're facing, there's nothing new under the sun. And God has healed all kinds of sickness and diseases. There's clear testimonies throughout that you can go find. But you can lay hold of by revelation through the Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Lord your healer and discover that He is a bigger God. That you have a big God and a small devil and that He's more than able and that He can make you more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you and that He can cause you to reign in life, that He paid the price for your sickness on the cross. He took upon the cross the cause of your sickness and disease, and He overcame it so that there's no right for your sickness and disease to be in your body if you will look at the cross and fix your eyes on the cross. You must not be discouraged if not immediately healed. You might be a gradual recovery. And we're told that we're to go lay hands and that they would recover. So recovery can be part of the healing process. There is times where there's an instant and immediate healing, but there's times there's a gradual recovery. We must lay hold of by faith and continue to receive and build ourselves upon the word. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight or appearance. We can look at, for example, Abraham and the story of Abraham and how Sarah was unable to give birth to a child throughout her whole life. But God waited till Abraham was unable to father a child. And in that state, God turned up. And it says in Romans that um, Abraham hoped against hope because hope was dead. His body was unable to father a child. And Sarah was clearly unable to have a child all her life. Now they're aged 
and it's obviously impossible. But God is the God of the impossible, and God did accomplish one of the greatest miracles and would birth a nation through Abraham. God is able because His Word will not return to Him void. And if we stand on His Word, it was through His Word He created the heavens and the earth. And it's always through a word. As we read the Gospels, it was through His Word that He healed people so often. If we receive His Word, He sent forth His Word and He healed your disease. So receive the Word of God and it is able to heal you whether instantly or gradually. Always just keep your eyes focused on Jesus and not on the sickness or disease. He said, a cheerful heart is a tonic to yourself and to others. Therefore, cultivate a happy disposition. We must lay hold of the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that we're considered all joy. Because why? We're more than conquerors. And that we have gained a far surpassing victory in us. Through Him, I should say. That this sickness and disease will bow to Jesus. And what's the worst outcome? You win either way. But Jesus is the Lord your healer and He desires to heal your body. Whether instantly or through recovery, you can receive your healing even now. We must not allow the enemy to get us caught in discouragement and depression because when we get our eyes on the situation, we become discouraged. But As Paul says, I will not be put to shame in anything because he trusted in the Lord, that God is able and he's the God that calls things that be not as though they were, and that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Why? Because in his presence is fullness of joy, and in his presence you'll find fullness of hope and life. As you stand before him, that life begins to just permeate your body and bring forth change. And by the Holy Spirit, you're being transformed. And He's also able to transform your mortal body. And that transformation should begin to be seen on your face with a joy that's unexplainable, that becomes a testimony that in the midst of all circumstances, you were unmoved by the circumstance, but moved by the Spirit. We don't go by what we see, We go by what the Spirit says. And we are free. And so you're not bound by or held captive by your circumstance, by your sickness. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's a phenomenal testimony. And that you overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and love and not your life unto death. Finally, he said, God is glorified and His works made manifest when the supernatural is in evidence. We see throughout the New Testament that Jesus was glorified, God was glorified through healings. That the attention was brought that God is the Lord, your healer. And God wants to magnify and glorify the name of Jesus today. He wants you to become a testimony and a witness that Jesus is Lord and the Lord healer. So as we lift him up, as we receive our healing, God desires, we discover that Jesus, God desires to answer your prayer. That you have access to the Father through the name of Jesus. And that He wants your joy to be made complete by answer prayer. And if we ask anything in accordance with His will, which if we look at healing is part of His will because it was made, uh, provided for on the cross. So God wants to reveal in and through you the victory of Jesus so that others can see and others can receive. I waited patiently for the Lord and He heard my cry and He lifted me and He he lifted me out of my mud and my mire, which may be sickness and disease, and He put me on a rock so that many shall see, many shall fear, many shall put their trust in the name of the Lord. We also say that we're to forget not none of his benefits, who heals all of your diseases. Let the healed of the Lord say so. So it's time that we speak it forth and declare it because God wants to make a glorious deliverance of his people as a testimony to this generation that he is still the same yesterday, today, and forever and that the price paid on the cross was complete and that He wants you to receive full salvation, which includes not just uh, saved from sin 
and the healing of your body, but to be made whole. He wants to restore you, which as you read every story of healing, so often you will see they were made whole, not just healed, made whole. Because the consequence of that sickness and disease and the um, weight and price that it took, you know, the, whether it was social, financial, it was a heavy price that the person paid. But God made them whole. And God wants you to be made whole, complete. That was the purpose of the cross, whole, complete, set free from sin and the consequences of sin. So I pray that you will lay hold of the Word and accept it as final authority in your life. Build yourself upon the Word and not the opinions of a person or a man, but go into the Word. Many testimonies you can go forth and read, and they should build your faith, particularly those found in the Word. And may they build faith in you to acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord, your healer, and that He wants to heal you today. And that you would lay hold of that by His stripes you are healed and made whole. I pray right now that you're blessed and encouraged in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.